Yeah, we're just looking ahead to the Cummings runners on the weekend. Start off in Melbourne, Strike the Stars and Fontalina run in the Australian Guineas. Strike the Stars, fifth behind Rainer Fair in the Expressway, first up. Yeah, look, uh, Stroke the Stars is performing uh, very well. Uh, obviously, first up there, we were, we were very happy with how he went. Um, his work uh, from that point on until uh, sort of going down to Melbourne was, um, you know, fantastic. Really couldn't have been any happier with him, the way that uh, he was working and, and the way that he, he looked. Um, he sort of settled in, in in Melbourne there for, uh, you know, fairly well. Uh, it's his first time travelling, so... Um, under all the circumstances, we're very pleased. Is he headed to the AJC Derby? Is that his main target for the campaign? At this point in time, yeah, that's right. Um, that's been the, uh, the program set out for him. Um, the Australian Guineas was uh, always an option. Um, and I suppose, uh, sort of having had a look at, at how um, some of the horses at the top of the market have performed, um, you know, predominantly sort of helmet first up, um, it's certainly opened things up. Um, and with the horse going as well as we feel Strike the Stars is, I think it, it would be remiss of us not to sort of have a throw at the stumps. Where do you think he'll be in the run? Will he get back and run on? Look, he's, um, he probably doesn't have any real uh, racing pattern uh, set up as yet. I suppose uh, the, the main thing that most, um, most of the horses, most of the jockeys and trainers will be thinking about is that Helmet will probably go to the front and try and do what he did in the Caulfield Guineas, uh, in which case you would uh, you would hope that there'd be a bit of pressure up on him uh, on him up on the speed. Um, if that's the case, uh, then you know. And again, sort of depending on the barriers and, and certain other factors, um, probably be in the horse's best interest to sort of get back and run on. But look, there's there's far too much between uh, now and then to sort of decide upon um, before we make a, a call on uh, sort of racing tactics. And Fontalina coming off a win at Rose Hill last week. Yeah, look, he's been in superb form. Um, unlucky second up uh, to run second there uh, with a wide gate and a big weight. Um, his, his two wins this prep have, have been uh, full of merit and, um, and you know, convincing under the circumstances. Um, very happy with him. It's always sort of been the plan to send him down to Melbourne. Um, you know, that, some of that, that decision did depend on how he raced on Saturday and obviously, you know, performing well and, and winning. Um, you know, it was beyond doubt. Um, we'd be very, very happy with him sort of heading into Saturday's race. You feel he's right to have a crack at a group one? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, look, he's a stakes performing, a stakes winning two year old. Um, he's run over, he's always sort of cried out for something like the mile, uh, potentially even further as, uh, as he gets older and, and as he sort of gets deeper into his preparation. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's, uh, he'd be shy of a Group 1 field uh, in his own uh, age and, and weight sort of class uh, at all. Diamond Costa runs in the Silver Slipper at Rose Hill on Saturday, uh, coming off a decent break after running in the Maribyrnong Plate last time. Yeah, that's right. So he's got the experience on the board there, running up the straight at Flemington. We're clearly holding him in very good stead. Um, you know, in terms of sort of uh, race fitness, he's sort of meeting a few uh, hardened season gallopers um, that have been up and running for the last sort of month and a half. Um, you know, John O'Shea's horse uh, is sort of first up after af after a break. Um, John Thompson's horse, uh, Hasuza, is sort of put in a good effort first up there at Warwick Farm. Look, it's a crack field. Um, you know, he's a very nice horse. Um, whether whether sort of he'll be ready to win first up, I, I, I wouldn't be too sure against a field like that. But he's certainly, uh, he's certainly going to sort of show his worth uh, on Saturday and um, you know, bigger and better things ahead for him. And you've also nominated for that meeting uh, Single Warrior and Dealer Principal. Yeah, both in benchmark races. Dealer Principal uh, with an 86 rating in a benchmark 75 or 80 uh, will probably have to carry the grandstand. Um, I'd imagine that uh, you know, we'd, we'd find an apprentice for him if he was going to go ahead and, and run in that race. Um, to try and uh, sort of subdue the amount of weight that he'd have to carry. Uh, single Warrior is performing very well at the moment, um, sort of gets in well at the weights, um, you know, with the rain around and, and uh, you know, certain other factors. We'd be, uh, we'd be confident that both of them could run a good race. I think Dealer Principal probably not quite ready to run um, the race of his prep uh, just as yet, but still certainly heading in the right direction. Best from the Cummings team on the weekend, Edward. 
look at it, it would be hard to go past uh, our two New Guineas. I think uh, I think they're both genuine each way chances um, and very hard to split the two of them.